Hey everyone, it's Adam Ratliff here with Adam So Fun. Um, I ran out of bobbin thread. I knew it was going to happen. I thought it was going to happen, but I didn't check it. And I'm like, oh, I might be able to get one more row. And then the bobbin ran out. So, um, hey, teaching moment. I get to make another video and show you how I um, get my place back. And I'm going to clean out my bobbin and everything. So, um, this is where I caught it. I stopped it, and then I had pulled some stuff up and thought, oh, let's make a video, so I just needled down. So, um, first thing first, I'm going to needle up. I'm going to trim this. Oh, I, was like, I couldn't find my scissors. I leave a rather long tail over here because I'm going to use my, if I had it, my seam ripper, which I don't have right with me right now. So, I'm going to use a pin. And I pull back to an intersection that I can, um, somewhere where I'm going to be able to start. Um, I haven't, this is, uh, the, not the beta version of the current pro stitcher that's out. So, um, you do have to start at one of the design points. So I usually do this with a seam ripper. Um, I saw that Megan Best, one of our other educators uses an, an all, uh, am I saying it right? An all, all. Um, however you say it, because it doesn't have a, it has a blunt point. And I thought, hey, that's genius. Mine arrives today, so I can't show you it. Um, <clears throat> so I pulled out to this corner because that's where I'm going to have that start when we restart. Um, all right, I'm going to move the camera so you can see into the bobbin area. So I, because I'm going to clean it and oil it and do all that jazz. So I'll see you in a second. All right, so this is the interior of my bobbin case. Um, I have the Infinity 26. So down here you see a lot of things that you probably don't see on your machine. Um, if you have the Forte, Amara, or Infinity, you are allowed to use canned air. The lint is blown out the back where my finger is. So um, you can use canned air in this. Um, you have to be careful if you use a brush here because there's a thread cutter and there's a light and you don't want to unplug those. So that's uh, one of the reasons that we suggest using a um, canned air. I'm going to pull my latch and pop my bobbin case out. Um, I still come in here with the brush and this is a, like a makeup brush or an art brush. I can't remember. And it's a very soft one. And I, I'm not scraping it. I'm just kind of going around, getting any big clumps that I can see out. And then I follow that up with a shot of candy. I also need to put some oil in there. I do like a half a drop of oil every bobbin. Um, we suggest, I think right now it's a drop of oil every other bobbin. So I just do a half a drop every bobbin. Now I've taken the thread out of my needle. And I'm going to needle down so you can kind of see how that works. And if you look, you can see where the, um, the hook is riding around that little edge. I put my oil right here. Up. So I actually putting it on the ledge that it's um, spinning around on. So I'm going to do a little half a drop. And then I um, distribute that oil. I hold this button down, distribute that around. And that's how I oil my machine. And then I will stop needle up, get my new bobbin. And I am a winder. I like to wind my own bobbins. Um, personal preference. It's just what I do. And when I put the bobbin in, I'm going to hold it right like this. There. And we want to hear this. If you don't hear the click, take the bobbin out. And then put it back in. You always want to hear that click because then you know your bobbin is set in there correctly. Um, now everything's done on my bobbin area. I can go up and let's find our new start end. We'll see you right back in a second. All right, so we're back. Um, I've already threaded my machine. I'm ready to find that new point. So I'm going to hit the, um, the X and... I hope I'm not too shaky. I am holding the camera because I have to move the machine quite a bit. So um, I'm gonna look down here and here is where we stop stitching. And I'll come and zoom in here a little bit. So I'm gonna move my machine to that, cor uh, to that point, somewhere close to it. And once I'm there, coming back up to the screen, I like to zoom in so I can make sure I'm getting that perfect. You can see, um, let's see. You can see where it ended up stitching to because it 
turns orange as it stitches. This is where we actually ran out of thread. So I'm gonna zoom into that. Put my crosshair somewhere near where the, um, the thread ran out. And I'm gonna come up here to my our tabs window. Oops, there we go. I'm gonna come up here to our tabs window and I'm going to, sorry about the um, screen doing that weird thing, hit my Pro Stitcher tab. Now in my ribbon, I'm gonna hit new start end. And over in my sidebar, we see the end and the start. We're working with the start because we want to change that start point. So I'm going to hit this auto button. Uh-oh, not that one. Auto. Now, do you see that I have that new start point right here? And it's the uh, it's the start start point because it has the circle as um, the circle green X. So something to keep in mind with auto is that it doesn't turn itself off. So watch that point as I move. See how it's moving with my needle? Am I moving my machine crazy? Let's get this back to here. There we go. See how it um, it's moving with my machine? So I want to put that where I want it. And then I'm going to hit auto again. We have to turn that off. And... Um, I came back a little bit because I wanted to do some tie-offs and restitch over that just a bit. But um, now I can, um, I like to personally pull up my bobbin thread and do my tie-offs myself when I uh, resume. So I will needle down, needle up, pull up my bobbin thread, do a little bit of tie-off, and then just let it start stitching um, as if it were uh, stitching previously. Um, but it's a personal preference. I can select the um, tie off and pull up buttons over here at resume, but I'm just not, I'm not going to do that because I like to tie that off myself. So that's how you find your new start end. If I wanted to say I wanted to go over just a little bit more, I can use these arrows to move that start. Maybe I'll actually start right there. So it's all personal preference, but um, that's how you find your new start end. I hope that this helped you. If you have any questions, you can reach out to me at adamsofun.com, adamsofun at gmail.com, or um, on Instagram or Facebook, both of them also adamsofun. So um, see you soon and happy quilting. Bye all.